Hi there, and thanks for watching the next video of uh, Palo Alto Video Training Service. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about radio certification. Uh, we're going to show you how to uh, integrate your uh, Palo Alto Firewall with LDAP and uh, how to do it with the uh, radios. The next thing that I'm going to show you is uh, how to set up a radius. Uh, and how to do basically the authentication uh, for radius. Um, I have already installed a uh, free radius server it's called Free Radius. You can see it's installed on my machine. Free Radius uh, .net is, is the URL you could go and, and install the same thing. I am not changing any default configuration on Free Radius. So as you can see. Uh, there are there, there there are some uh, basic configuration already on free radius that can be used. So for the purpose of this demo, we will be using the same configuration. So I'm going to show you how to do that. To um, create a radius profile, first thing you need to do is just uh, go to server profiles radius the same way as you've done it for for Elda. Go to server profile radius. Click on add and we could call it uh, radius profile and uh, we add just the name and our IP address is going to be 192.168.62.1 if I'm not mistaken IP address of this uh, 62.1 that's our PC where this uh, software is installed. Uh, radius secret. Let's go and check at the radius clients to find out what the secret is. So you can see there are there are different clients in, uh, set up by default on, on this free radius. Uh, the one that we are looking at because we are looking at this range 192.168.0.0 uh, the secret is that so we're gonna copy that and <coughs> paste it here. So that's it. Our radius profile is uh, set up. Um, next step we're gonna do is. Uh, To set up an authentication profile. So before we do it, before we doing that, uh, we are accessing Radius profile on management interface through management interface. So we don't need to really change the service route. If you remember, I had to change the service route uh, for LDAP server because it was located on the internal network, not the management network. But this one is located in the management network, so I don't really need to go and change the service route. I could leave it as it is. Um, now I go to uh, authentication profile and set up an authentication profile for radius. Uh, just change the type to radius. This is the profile that we just created a couple of seconds ago. And uh, we just call it radius. And again, um, if you want to limit it to some specific users, you could, but we just want to. Hello, everyone. Click on OK. So our radius profile is also created. So as you can see, we have a radius profile, we have a radius. <coughs> server profile and authentication profile created. Um, the main reason that I want to show you this is, is uh, usually you don't want to maintain username and passwords on, on the firewall, so you want to have a central location. Uh, if we want to create a, a user, radius user, uh, to have access to the firewall admin interface, we could basically use this radius profile that I just created. And the way that it works 
is uh, first thing, let's uh, have a look and find out what users we have available on the far on, on the radio server. <coughs> and as you can see here, we have a user called test user with test pw as password. So the test user, what we need to do, we need to create the same username on uh, on the firewall administration administrator section, but rather than uh, being using it as a local, uh, we just choose the authentication profile as radius authentication profile, and uh, with super user privilege, click on OK, and this user is created now. So we got the test, we got admin user, which is on local database, and we got test user, which is on radius profile that we just created. So we should be, theoretically, we should be able to log in with test user account uh, um, and get access to the Palo Alto interface. Uh, and that, that test user account should be located on, on uh, radius server. So we just commit the change again. I'm going to give it a try, try to log in with the test users account. Okay, so we just have a look at the password again. The password for test user was test P. So we just start radius in debug mode. Log out from And as you can see, I just logged in uh, to the firewall with test user. Um, as you can see on the logs here, I've just logged in with the test user and authenticated test user with the radius uh, profile. So this is this is how you can integrate your uh, uh, firewall admin administrator accounts with the radius central radius uh, server you could you could also do that create admin rules and you could also do that uh, with uh, like a group so you don't really have to create accounts and, and stuff here but uh, this is my preference my own preference and the reason for that is uh, you don't really want to have a group on ID or something and uh, then uh, your uh, Active Directory admin users, they can add users to that group and, and get access to the firewall. Usually you want to have a second level of protection in there as well. So this way your user is being maintained in there, but there is a level of approval that someone needs to create the user here as well. But that's just uh, my uh, personal opinion. You could, you could do it differently if you want to. So um, I guess we've pretty much covered uh, all the stuff that uh, we wanted in this video. Uh, we talked about the lab integration, application profile, and user identification, and how to integrate uh, Radius to get uh, console admin access to the Palo Alto firewall and, and do changes and things like that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will be with you in the next video. Thanks for watching.